All right, we're back. We're going to change our focus to the NCAA tournament. I will proudly say I chose Florida Gulf Coast to make it to the Sweet 16. I chose Wisconsin to make the Final Four, so it kind of balances each other out considering uh, my knowledge. But, hey, I, I want to talk to you, Eric. Uh, you got a guy like Kelly Olenek. Uh, Canada hasn't really seen uh, great big men uh, being produced. This guy took a year off a junior to retool his game, came back, and was an All-American. Now the focus is, after losing in the third round, it was very disappointing for a number one ranked seed in Gonzaga. Will he make the jump to the NBA, or will he stay one more year and say, you know what, I want to actually go out on a better term? That's a tough call. I mean, he, uh, he graduated, so he's done his program. If he goes back, it'll be to take postgraduate studies. He's got one more year left. For him to go out uh, early, uh, I mean, it's, it's dollars and cents. If he, they figure he'll be a lottery pick if he, if he does go. There aren't that many seven-foot skilled kids that can run like he can. And shoot and dribble. Oh, complete and player. He's, uh, I wouldn't say like a Arvinus Sabonis, but it, uh, uh, probably with a better skill set than Arvinus did. But I remember Arvinus Sabonis being a guy who could shoot from the perimeter, what, he could dish the ball, uh, was very talented, uh, and not just a guy you just plug in as a number five or just stand around and grab rebounds. He was skilled all over. This guy's probably twice to three times what our Venus was in his prime. Unfortunately, we never got to see Sabonis play in his prime because by the time he got to the NBA, he was well past his prime, but he was still an impact player. And NBA teams and GMs are looking for impact big guys, and Olenek is definitely that. How hard is it for a kid not to know what's going to happen to him money-wise and to say, you know, I want to stay in school? <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty tempting. And, yeah. you know, college life, uh, it's a lot of craft and dinners. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how I would be able to pass that up if uh, I knew, if I just said, yes, I'm going to get a big payday. Well, uh, guaranteed dollars and an uncertain future. If you get hurt in college, all that goes away. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, one of the surprises, I was just mentioning how uh, <coughs> I met, took them to make it to the Sweet 16. They become the first 15 seed to do so. Uh, you've seen the twos uh, lose out to 15s, but uh, the way they've gone, they beat Georgetown, one of the teams that was considered a favorite to make the Final Four. Uh, and then you also have San Diego State. Not so much of a bigger upset compared to Georgetown, but still impressive nonetheless. Uh, do you feel that they were just underestimated, or is this team legit? I think what you're seeing is what's happening in college basketball in the States. You're getting a lot of one and out guys, big men, 6'10", 6'11", 7 feet. The NBA want these guys. So they one and done in college. And if you look at the tournament this year, there aren't that many good, big, skilled men playing. Uh, most of your players are the 6'8", six, 6'9", six, range. And uh, athletic and can play both ends of the floor. And Florida Gulf Coast, they're for real. They're a very good team. The problem is I don't know if they've got the depth. In other words, the guys coming off the bench that can step up and play at this level. At, by the time you get to the Sweet 16, you've got teams that are probably go 8-9 deep. And uh, I don't know if they do. And up next they, is Florida. And they're deep. Yeah, uh, you know, whenever you have those great teams, and it doesn't matter what sport it is, whether it be hockey, whether it be basketball, you're, you're, the skill set is all the same with your starting players. But it's, like you said, it's the it's bench, bench that wins you. So like in hockey, uh, you go to a championship, your one, two, and three lines are, are all pretty solid between each other, and it's usually that fourth line that gets a little extra time on a, in a given period, and de depending on the situation, that ends up winning you the championship. And I, and I think that's going to be the bottom line is, Who's going to come off the bench? Who's going to pick up the slack late in the first and early in the second that uh, there's going to be the difference in the game for them? If is they it get possible, though? Is it they possible? Get can they, oh, can they yeah. Make, no, but is it possible that they could actually uh, make it beyond, maybe to the Elite Eight? Two things will dictate it. One, whether they can get it done defensively. And it takes a lot of effort and a, a lot of hard work to play defense for 40 minutes. And that's why you need your bench. If they get into foul trouble, they're in trouble. Uh, their coach has done one heck of a job, and I'd be surprised if he's back there next year. He'll be moving up to a, a bigger school, I would think. UCLA has opened up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think, I, you know, it's, it's going to really determine uh, the defense is, is going to be huge for them. I, we saw what they can do offensively. They're amazing offensively. Yeah. But now they're going to go up against a team, and, and if, if they move, want to move ahead, that's going to be just as good as them offensively. We're going to see how they answer back defensively. Uh, let's go to the Sweet 16. Are, are there any teams that you feel that might make a surprise, or are we going to start seeing the, the teams that we expected to be, like the number ones? You might see Michigan come out. Uh, pull out of the seed, but you got Indiana still in there. You got Duke, that's still obviously a legit team uh, wherever they go. Uh, Michigan State with Tom Izzo and the way he's coached that team, uh, the most Final Four appearances out of any other coach in his tenure uh, on average. And then you also have uh, Louisville, um, who's got, so, like you say, the depth on that team is unbelievable and a favorite to still win it. Are those teams are the ones that you'd still consider, or is there a dark horse? out of the uh, 16 that we have remaining. With the NCAA, when you get to the, usually the Elite Eight, uh, you've got the best teams in the nation. Uh, in any tournament, if a team gets on a roll, like Florida Gulf Coast, they can go a long way and then go deep into the tournament. Kind of like George Mason a few years ago. Exactly, but at some point, they're gonna come up against a legitimate big team with, that goes nine, 10 deep and Louisville. I, I don't see anybody out there beating Louisville. Those guys are scary. Yeah, and Louisville is so deep too. And, oh. and, and you look what Duke can do too. Like it's gonna be the usual suspects again. Indiana's gonna be in there, Duke's gonna be in there. Don't count out Louisville. And either Michigan or Michigan State, uh, it'll be kind of interesting, but uh, Louisville, Duke, uh, expect them to be around when it's all said and done with. Well, that's going to be a great matchup if the, once they meet up. Uh, I do want to quickly get to the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, making a deal, they got rid of Joe Lobendon in the middle, who's a great run stopper, but uh, you'd say kind of lost a step or two. And they brought in a guy who's 32 years old, and he's stall star, but uh, Ray Williams, former rider. Uh, good move for Saskatchewan? I think so. I, I think uh, Lobodon is getting up in age. Like you said, he lost a step or two. Williams, a tremendous player. He had a great season in Hamilton. Uh, has a, a good working relationship with the riders coaching staff because uh, he worked with him in Hamilton before moving on to Saskatchewan so I, I like the deal I think they were looking at getting him as soon as the season was done. I think Williams is a, a really good addition it's not what he does on the field so much as what he does in the in the locker room the guy's a leader and uh, Saskatchewan needs more than just linebacking core but he's a good start he'll help a lot and that team is really building for the 2013 Grey Cup, that's for sure. All right, we're going to take another quick commercial break. We'll be back with Over Under next.